Hello, I'm Shannon Wyman, the Scientific Communications Manager at Keystone Symposia, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Joseph Wu, Director of the Stanford Cardiovascular Institute and Professor of Medicine and Radiology at Stanford School of Medicine. Dr. Wu is also an organizer of the Stanford Drug Discovery Symposium, which will be held this year on April 25th and 26th. Welcome, Dr. Wu. Thank you, Shannon. It's a great pleasure to be here. Great. Um, first, can you tell us a bit about starting the SDD, SDDS? Um, when was the Stanford Drug Discovery Symposium first held and what inspired its creation? Yeah, so uh, the SDDS, uh, this was first held in 2016, uh, initially as a one-day event, and all goal was to bring together um, speakers from uh, academia and uh, from pharmaceutical companies. And then at that time, we thought the drug discovery was an area that many people uh, may be interested in and that we have the unique opportunity to uh, provide a platform for sharing ideas, especially because it was an uh, in-person event at Stanford, you know, in the middle of uh, Silicon Valley. And we had such a positive uh, response uh, in our very first meeting in 2016 that we decided to continue hosting the event uh, afterwards. And so right now we are in our um, sixth year of SDDS and uh, we are encouraged that to see what continues, uh, you know, in terms of the event, what continues to grow uh, in scope and also uh, in the number of participants. And so for example, uh, last year we had over 7,000 participants at our virtual meeting. And we hope that uh, this year I will have as many, uh, if not more, uh, participants of this year. How does your own research fit in with the goals of the SDDS? And did any challenges in your work kind of shape your vision for putting this meeting together? Yeah, I think uh, I do a lot of uh, drug discovery uh, research in my lab. Uh, we combine um, clinical genomics, uh, AI machine learning, and human iPS cells from patients, especially rare open disease patients that come up uh, with uh, either repurposing the drug or new drugs. And, um, and therefore the uh, SDDS has become a perfect uh, setting uh, for us to discuss about some of these uh, issues. I think uh, besides our own work, I think there are uh, several other reasons why we thought this would be a great meeting. Uh, I think one reason would be that, you know, we wanted to offer a exciting forum uh, for the exchange of uh, research ideas, not just my own, but you know, many other uh, investigators. And um, the other reason is that we want to promote uh, translation of new drugs uh, into um, treatment for patients faster uh, and perhaps uh, cheaper as well. And then the third reason is that we just want to also expose uh, the next generation of scientists and uh, clinicians uh, to the many opportunities and resources uh, that are available to them uh, in the field of uh, drug discovery. So I think overall, uh, these goals uh, have helped uh, SDDS uh, become an important platform for uh, inter interdisciplinary exchange of ideas and also a great opportunity for networking. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, have you seen the focus or themes of the SDDS evolve over the years? Have they changed in the last six years or can you tell yeah. us about that? Yeah, so that's a great, uh, good question. Uh, I think, you know, over the years, uh, we have expanded uh, the meeting from a one-day event uh, into a two-day event, uh, which means that uh, we can both uh, invite uh, more uh, high-level speakers as well as uh, include uh, and pack in more uh, sessions. And so, for example, uh, in 2018, 2019, uh, we had a showcase session that uh, provided a platform for uh, smaller companies that could provide short talks and also allow them to uh, enhance their networking. And then last year, uh, we, uh, as a response to the pandemic, uh, we uh, included a session on COVID-19. Uh, so, for example, we had a panel session uh, that included speakers from Pfizer, uh, Moderna, uh, and J and J to talk about what went into the creation of their vaccines. So I think our meeting will uh, continue to evolve uh, over time, uh, and then this will allow us to invite the uh, broadest range of uh, speakers that are most up to date and most uh, relevant to our meeting. Great. 
Great, yeah, there was a lot of work last year going on in the COVID space, and those are certainly the biggest players, <laughs> so <laughs> exciting. Um, what new directions and paradigms will be explored at this year's SDDS? Well, I think there are several areas, and uh, just one, for example, one area would be uh, this year uh, would be the first time that we include legal legal uh, perspectives, uh, legal perspectives in the sense that we'll have uh, patent lawyers and uh, corporation lawyers that talk mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, what it takes to get an uh, IP uh, prosecuted and protected and what it takes uh, to get a, a company incorporated, especially for the startup stage. And uh, just like every other year, we uh, invite uh, speakers uh, from different companies uh, so that we like to rotate them so that we can hear about some of the latest work that the uh, different companies are doing and uh, share with us uh, some of their uh, successes and failures. Great. Um, in addition to law, what other sectors will be represented and why is it important to get these groups together um, to synergize or facilitate translational progress? So I would say uh, many of the sectors uh, are, represent, uh, are represented, and I think our meeting is unique in the sense that we bring together uh, leaders from uh, uh, major pharmaceutical companies, uh, NIH, uh, FDA, uh, the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine, and other foundations. Uh, we also bring together uh, venture capitalists, and as I mentioned earlier, legal experts, and then also top scientists in academia who are making groundbreaking advances in drug discovery. Great. Um, do you have any examples of how these groups work together better than when they're kind of doing their own thing separately or how it accelerates the translational progress? Yeah, I think, you know, science and research in general, I think when it's in silo, uh, then it just takes a longer, uh, whereas if you bring together people uh, in, setting and have people network uh, during that uh, setting, uh, it tends to accelerate uh, the research uh, uh, faster. Uh, in our own case, I think uh, with these meetings, we've had several uh, companies that reach out to different investigators at Stanford uh, to set up uh, collaborations on different areas, ranging from oncology to cardiovascular to uh, uh, neurodegenerative diseases. Great. Um, what are there any particular highlights that audience should know about at this meeting, whether it's various companies represented, um, any individuals that you're looking forward to seeing speak? Each year, uh, we uh, present a Lifetime Achievement Award uh, to recognize uh, someone uh, whose uh, body of work has uh, enabled a change that improves uh, human health. And so, uh, for example, in the past, we honored uh, Dr. Roy Vazulis, uh, who was the previous uh, CEO of Merck. Uh, and then uh, we also honored the late uh, Dr. James Van Martin, uh, who was the uh, previous uh, CEO of Gilead. And then last year, we honored uh, Dr. Doug Lowry and Dr. John Schiller uh, from the NIH for their research uh, that led to the uh, development of the HPV vaccine. Uh, so this year, we're very excited uh, to present this award to uh, Dr. Caitlin Terrico. Uh, she's the uh, Senior Vice President of RNA, RNA Therapies at uh, BioNTech, uh, and she's being recognized for her similar work on mRNA, uh, which led to the development of the Pfizer BioNTech uh, COVID-19 vaccine. And so on the first day, uh, she'll present a uh, talk on her work, uh, followed by Q&A session. And then on the second day, she'll be participating in a uh, fireside chat uh, to share more about her career path uh, to the audience. Exciting. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> um, so clearly, there's been a lot of work in vaccines in the last two years or so. Um, so vaccines and therapeutics will be a major focus. Um, but diagnostic tests are also an important part of the ecosystem of drug discovery and development and treatment. Um, can you tell us about important directions and advances in the diagnostic development that will be covered and why these are important? Yeah, so, so uh, I think you're perfectly right. Uh, so, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing from our speakers on what kind of advances have we uh, made in the field of uh, diagnostics, uh, as well as vaccines and therapeutics. 
And I think given the uh, broad range of the companies that are being represented at our meeting, uh, I, you know, I think uh, the promise to be quite insightful in terms of what they have to offer. And I do look forward to hearing about some of these uh, uh, recent developments uh, from our speakers, yeah. Great. Um, is there anything else our audience should know about the, the CDS this year? Well, I'm just very excited. I mean, I think based on our uh, list of speakers, uh, SDBS, uh, you know, 2022, uh, I think it promises to be in a very exciting, uh, interesting, and also uh, a very, hopefully a very insightful uh, two-day uh, symposium. Uh, I would say that equally important is our audience uh, participation. Uh, you know, the way we set it up is that each session has a panel of discussion where the audience uh, participants can ask uh, questions uh, of the session speakers. And so this way, uh, the, uh, these sessions become quite engaging and you know, become a true highlight of our symposium. And so we hope to uh, you know, have a broad reach of these audience and encourage uh, people to register, to log on and to participate. Uh, the registration is completely free. And so I look forward to seeing all of you. Great. Um, and given that it's 100% virtual this year, what do you think are the benefits of being virtual um, in the discussion panel format? Yeah, I think there are a lot of benefits. I think in the uh, first couple, of, first few years when it was uh, in person, uh, we were forced uh, to cap the uh, attendance at about 500 people due to the uh, capacity. And um, because it it is virtual, uh, we have a much, much uh, broader reach. So anyone uh, in the whole world uh, who is uh, interested, uh, they can lock in from wherever they are to listen. And last year we had essentially, you know, uh, uh, audience from Europe, from Asia, from South America, from Australia, and from different continents. And also, uh, you know, for those uh, who may be in a different time zone and are unable uh, to view the uh, talks of real time, uh, we'll be sharing the recordings uh, immediately following the uh, symposium. And these videos will be posted on our website and also on uh, the Keystone website. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, that'll be a great resource for everyone moving forward. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and we really look forward to joining you at the Stanford Drug Discovery Symposium this year. Yeah, and thank you, Shannon, for the interview. And I look forward to seeing all of you.